Hi, um, my name is Jeff Gramlick, and this is Ling Niem, and together we're going to be delivering uh, ACC 211 managerial accounting this summer. And we're in recording this video to introduce you to that course and to each other, to our, ourselves. And um, yeah, that's what this is about. So. Um, just a little bit about me. I, I teach here at the University of Southern Maine, have been here for 11 years, uh, and I teach accounting, primarily uh, financial accounting, but also some managerial accounting. Um, yeah, i have originally from Colorado and have lived in a, several different places around the world uh, and ultimately ending up here. I have a wife who's Danish, and two kids uh, who uh, come from Guatemala, Santos and Sonia. They're 14 and 13 years old. Now well, that's a little bit about me. Do you want to say something about you? All right. Um, my name is Ling, and um, I'm graduating from USM this May uh, with an MBA in um, finance concentration, or at least it used to be finance. Um, and now I'm just a general MBA after passing C the CFA Level 1 exam. Um, what, what what is the CFA? It's the charter. Um, it's a chartered financial analyst program, and there are three levels of exam. And um, so it's a it's, it's a professional yeah. certificate that's pretty rigorous. And uh, um, if you have the letters or see the letters CFA behind someone's name, it's pretty strong indication that they understand finance. So I'm hoping to get those letters after my name yeah. in a couple of years. Um, other than that, I came from Vietnam, um, and in fact, in May, the end of May, or mid-May to the end of May, um, Jeff and I are taking a group of 11 MBA students to Vietnam on a business-focused study tour. We are very excited about that. Yes. Um, so I'm very excited to um, offer this course to you guys. This will be my fourth time right. instructing yeah. this course. So Ling is, is the primary instructor for for the course, and I'm uh, supervising her. Uh, questions that come up that she can't deal with, then they they end up with me. Uh, so that's that's kind of how we work together. Um, so as we get into it, let's let's go on to Blackboard. Mm -hmm. Ready to do that? Uh, and when you go to Blackboard Courses .edu, Let's see. I want to make sure I feel like I'm off to the side a little bit. Okay. I, I don't know where we are. It's hard, <laughs> hard to tell. Um, but if we go into uh, your home page, you see here, and you see um, your courses over on the right-hand side, and, and you want to click on the ACC 211. Uh, of course, you're not going to be the instructor, but other than that, it should look like that for, for you once you get registered for the course. And this is the home page for the course. And over on the left hand side you see uh, a, a menu uh, that shows the course syllabus and outline and, and the announcements. Uh, those announcements are going to show up right on the, on the front. They should show up on the front once we have an announcement, which will be rather soon since we're going to announce this video. Um, and then connect, and we're going to show you, or Ling's going to show you the connect uh, software, which is part of uh, this course, and you need to have that. Um, here you're going to see things like videos and um, homework solutions, if there are any, that there's, um, those kinds of things are going to be in the course content. Um, and most of the homework solutions are going to be just get delivered through connect. But... Um, so let's take a look at the syllabus and outline. And you can see that it comes in both um, a sort of a, a web page like this. And the web page uh, is, is pretty nice. It works pretty good if you go, um, let me show you how you can do that. It, if you go to the course syllabus and outline and you click here, to open in a new tab, it works particularly good. I don't know what that is, but 
uh, so it looks like this. And, and you can do it there, or you can go in, in PDF. And it depends on how your, your viewer is within your computer and which browser you're using. But this works pre pretty good. So this is the course, and we're just going to go through the syllabus. You probably want to print this out. If you haven't, stop the video and, and, and download and print it. You'll, you'll find it in that um, where, where we found it here. And you can see that the, the course starts on Monday, June 30th, and ends on Friday, August 15th. Um, it is... Uh, a very intensive course. It's it's seven weeks long. It's a normally a 14-week class, and so um, we're double time all the way through, and we are not cutting anything out during during that per period of time. So if you miss just one class, you're essentially missing the same thing as a week. If you miss one uh, one week of this, you somehow fall behind by a week. You're missing. You're you have fallen behind by two weeks in a regular semester of this course. And most people will tell you that this course is pretty intense compared to other courses that they have in the uh, freshman and sophomore level of of their college career. So even in a 14 week period, this is a seven week, and it's going to be more intense. So here. Uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about managerial accounting, and uh, let me just kind of give you a little bit of background about that. Financial accounting, you've, you should have had ACC 110 or an equivalent someplace. And uh, with financial accounting, you're reporting to people outside the firm, people, people like banks or investors, other people outside the firm. And they need to be able to uh, know that a certain set of rules have been followed in preparing these financial statements. We call those rules generally accepted accounting principles. And then we have an auditor, an external auditor that comes in usually and doesn't, it's not required for a small company that doesn't need any financing, but an external auditor will come in and, and sort of check uh, and uh, to see that these financial statements are fair. And do some tests and and do some checking and see that they're fair and that they comply with generally accepted accounting principles. All of that changes when you're talking about managerial accounting because in managerial accounting it's all in-house and uh, the manager can get all of the information that she or he needs um, and can choose in what form uh, she needs this information. So it's, it's a different thing. It's, there's no rules to follow on, in managerial accounting. What we're going to be talking about and, and showing you is some basic techniques that are used by many firms, but each firm is going to use specific ones, and many of them are unique to their, their company. We're just going to be talking about the general concepts and, and applying some general rules, general not rules, but principles, how, how it's done. So let's take a look. It says, this course offers, offers an opportunity for students to gain an introduction to selected managerial accounting topics, including cost behavior, product costing, budgeting, performance management, and relevant costs and benefits. The three main components of the course pertain to cost management, planning and control, and strategic decision-making. Uh, it's going to provide you with the opportunity to learn the basic concepts and accounting systems involved in the use of managerial accounting information in organizations in order to make planning and control decisions. Um, the basic concepts include uh, understanding different types of costs. We have direct and indirect, fixed and variable, and relevant costs. Um, different kinds of accounting systems like job job order and process costing and then planning and this is uh, and I have a personal preference because I like the planning side of it the cost volume profit uh, analysis the budget um, flexible budgets and variance analysis uh, performance measurement all of that seems that is the part that I really love 
But I love it all, really. But those, those are my special favorites, and you'll get to that toward the end of the course. This course focuses on the use of accounting data for internal management decision. That's what I talked about earlier. Um, you're going to learn the nature of costs and how to analyze and control them. Um, you're going to look at, at the different techniques for analyzing and, and figuring out what information is useful and what's not useful. And um, look at budgeting. Um, and that's going to help you manage a company more profitably and efficiently. Um, so you need to have finished ACC 110 or its equivalent with a C minus or better and you should have sophomore standing. Um, presumably you have those things before you watch this video. If not, you better check into it. So at the end of this course you should be able to uh, identify managerial accounting issues and, and say, all right, this, this is an issue here um, that we're uh, a problem. And I think I can handle it, or at least I can set it up and say to somebody else who can what the problem is. For example, you could say, um, how many units do we have to sell in order just to break even? Or... How many units do we have to sell in order to make $10,000? Those kinds of uh, managerial accounting issues. Um, can I also identify what information you need, and implicitly, and this is important, what information you don't need. Because we live in an information age, and we've got way more information than we need. Lots and lots of information. And so what you need to do is sort of sift through and get to the stuff that you really need and throw away the stuff that you don't. Um, and then you be, should be able to address problems. And, and we're going to work through quite a few problems in this course. Okay, the, the textbook. We're using the 14th edition of uh, Managerial Accounting. Uh, can I show it? Mm -hmm. So it looks like this. Um, it's got this sort of brownish yellow. We're not using the 15th edition. You should be happy about that because it'll save you probably $150 or more for, for that textbook. Um, you will, you can buy it used. Um, and I would recommend that. Um, you can do it with, and then you can sell the book after you get done. Um, you can, you also need to have the Connect homework tool. And um, the ebook can be purchased, can be obtained online along with Connect for $125. Of course, if you buy the ebook, you can't sell that afterwards. If you want to use the Connect tool, it's $65 by itself. So, I mean, if you get, I think you can probably buy this, um, this book for like $40 or $50 and probably sell it when you get done. And, it'll, uh, and then just I, my recommendation is that you buy a used version of the of the 14th edition, the one that I, I just showed you, and use it. If you like it, you can keep it. It's not that big of an investment. If you don't and you want to sell it, you can still sell it. Um, and, but in any case, you, you need to spend the $65 on the Connect because we, that is a homework tool that we will be using throughout this, this semester, and it's required. So altogether, it should be less than uh, a a hundred dollars or right around a hundred dollars before you sell back your book if you decide to do that and that's not that's not terrible in this this day uh, this is where you can uh, purchase your connect uh, online for sixty five dollars can you I say, say something, something? Um, yeah. so I have a lot of students trying to look for the course on the Connect website, don't do that. It's really hard to find a course because they run many courses. The best way to do so is just to click on this link or on the left side, the left panel of, of Blackboard, you will see Connect right here. And that's the way you purchase it.
don't go on to connect on McGraw Hill and and try to look for the okay. course. Yeah, if you go there, nightmare. it it's kind of it, it's hard. Yeah. I've done that myself, and it's, it's, it's just not hard. So th in terms of the grades and how, how the grades are going to be determined for this course, it, it's an all-online class except for the final exam. So you need to show up for the final exam, and we'll discuss that in a little, in a little while. Um, there's homework that's 20% of, uh, of your grade. There are two progress checks, which you could think of as, as essentially... Like, um, larger homeworks, but they 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 um, they're, they're 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 cumulative and they cover several different chapters, and they're they're together worth twenty percent. So you don't want to ignore those those progress checks. Then we have uh, these Learn Smart quizzes that are online. They're weekly. And they're worth 10%. So that together, all of that is 50%, 20, 20, and 10. And then we have a cumulative final exam that is 50%. Um, and that's how your grade will be determined in, in, in this course. Um, each of the assignments that you have for homework is uh, from a specific textbook exercise and problem. And they're identified, right? So mm -hmm. you will find in your textbook... Uh, it'll say exercise 4-13, and you can find that when you're doing Connect, most of the time you just work on Connect, but you can find that homework assignment also on, in, in the textbook. Now, the numbers are likely to be different because Connect kind of jumbles the numbers so that uh, right. Mm -hmm. You have unlimited attempts on each of the homework that we were just talking about, but each attempt will provide you with um, a different set of data, so you're unlikely to have the same numbers as your friends and unlikely to have the same numbers if you restart an attempt. Yeah, okay. There's about the, the two progress checks in the end we've already discussed. They're after Chapter 4 and after Chapter 9. Uh, the Learn Smart quizzes are this learning tool that's on Connect. Uh, they're little short little quizzes. Um, they're interactive. It, they're interactive and they, they kind of they change depending mm -hmm. on how well you've done on the first question changes the questions to the next one, which is kind of the way of the future in education. So it, it uh, modifies to your ability, uh, but it also um, produces a, a score and each one is worth, um, uh, well, together the, it, it's worth 10%. Yeah. The first Learn Smart quiz is um, two extra points. So if you do that and you get two points, that's on top of all the points that you will get out of so the course. So it's extra credit. Yep. So get on it. Do do the very first one, and you'll be already ahead of the game. Yep. Um, there will be a cumulative final exam. It's going to take place on Friday, August 15th. We'll give you the specific specific time and location are, are going to be announced. Um, if you're not in the Portland area you, and you, you, um, you need to contact Ling in, as soon as you get this and, and let her know that you're not in the Portland area, um, but really at the, at the very latest by July 14th. And you will, uh, and if you don't want to come to Portland, of course you're welcome to come to Portland on uh, on August fifteenth for the final exam. But if you don't want to come to Portland, um, then you need to arrange a, a suitable testing site. So most universities, including USM, and I haven't heard of any that don't have some sort of testing center. This is generally where tests like CLEP. Uh, GMAT, GRE, those kinds of things are delivered. And you need to go to a university or even a community college and or even a testing center, a commercial testing center, which also exists out there. You need to find one of those places and get connected with Ling. So we know where, where you are. You can also do it through the University of Maine system. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little it's bit about that? It's called the University College Learning Service. 
and there's a link right here. You click on it. Um, right now, it's only showing courses in the spring, but once courses in the summer are showing, you will find the name of our course, and then you follow the instructions and um, yeah. register yourself to take the exam remotely at one of the U main system universities. Okay. And I don't think that will cost you. Yeah, I don't think that costs anything to do it through a U main. So, like, if you're in o Orno or um, Presque Isle or someplace like that, just need to have it also by July 15th. You need to get that information. Otherwise, if we don't hear from you by July 15th, we're expecting you to be taking the exam in person. In Portland. In Portland. Yep. Okay. The exam is basically problem oriented because a lot of what managerial accounting is is, is problem problems. So there's going to be some concepts, and most of the concepts are going to be um, usually they're delivered in the multiple choice, and then you have problems. Uh, there there could be some matching, um, but um, I would say the majority of it is going to be multiple choice and problems. Okay. Keep in mind that, that time is important. On, on a final exam, you'll be given... Uh, two hours. Two hours. Okay. Um, I don't know that there's been a whole lot of crunch in, the, in this course, but, mm -hmm. but you certainly don't want to come in late. You want to work, work hard and get, and get it delivered. You do need to turn it in on time, um, and there will be a penalty if it's not submitted on time at the end of the two-hour period. Okay. So uh, we are expecting to show you to show up for the exam. Um, and if you don't, you will be assigned an F in the course. So you, if you have to miss the exam, you need to contact uh, Ling or myself before the exam starts. And this is... Um, this applies to uh, emergencies, family emergencies, or medical problems. You need to let us know before the exam starts. And the information about contacting us is at the top of the, of the course syllabus on the first page. Um, if you don't do it with, that, with the advance notice, it will be scored a zero. Uh, you need to then follow up with written documentation of, of, of uh, the medical or family emergency. If it's a religious holiday, you need to let us know, let's say by the July 15th date, because uh, religious holidays just don't come up that quick. You know, you should, that, that's not a surprise. Um, so you need to let us know well in advance. So... Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the practice problems? Mm -hmm. So um, on Connect, which we'll go over um, in a couple of minutes, you will find a couple of practice problems. They come in th three sets. The interactive videos, they are not graded. They um, go over um, each of the chapters and bullet points. And um, some people have found it very helpful, but some just find the book itself um, doing all the job. And then... You will also find the chapter practice. These are also not graded. You have 20 to 60 questions to work with, and you'll see the answers after you attempt them. And there are optional homework practice, which is also not graded. And um, each set will be released two minutes after your own homework is due. And the optional homework practice will mirror your homework in a way that they are the same questions they use a different set of data so you can rework the problems that you feel like mm -hmm. you're not, you were unsure about as you were doing your homework. Yeah, we set that up so that they would give you different data so you wouldn't just memorize I mean, some, just by accident sometimes uh, the answer. And this way it gives you a chance to work it again but it, with a different set of numbers and you can be sure that you, uh, that you know it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, Academic integrity. This applies primarily to the final exam. Um, and so the final exam is a solo experience. And 
you need to plan to, to work uh, on your own and you will be allowed to bring a calculator but that calculator uh, cannot communicate with others um, and um, on the online stuff so you have the uh, the regular homework and then you you've got the chapter four and chapter nine progress updates mm -hmm. I mean, those kinds of those things can be done working beside each other now keep in mind that the numbers that you have are going to be different than the numbers some other classmate has um, the 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 quizzes, the chapter quizzes, are really designed to be uh, done on a solo basis. Um, so that's kind of on your honor since it's online. But that's the that's the purpose. We want to try to figure out how well you're doing. And if you are um, not doing that work yourself, it's probably only going to hurt you. We 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 use that as a feedback tool so that we know how you're doing. And if you're bluffing us um, because you don't really know it, then we're not going to be able to reach out and let and and uh, help you through this course. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go over Connect. Yeah, yeah. And so this talks about the mission, the, the mission with the School of Business, mm -hmm. and then you shouldn't have repeated this more than twice. Twice before you shouldn't have had it more than twice before. Let's talk about. Uh, students with disabilities. If you have a disability, uh, my suggestion is that you contact me or Ling. Uh, if you're uncomfortable about that, you can go directly to the office for students with with disabilities. The contact inf information is given here. My goal is to make it a level playing field so that if you do have a, a, a learning disability of, of some type, that you're treated and given the accommodation so that you, um, it's a level playing field for everybody that's in the course. You shouldn't be at a disadvantage because you have this learning disability. The course schedule uh, is going to be kept on the on the Blackboard site and the course in the syllabus and outline folder. Correct? Yep. Um, if you scroll down, it's right there. And it's right here. Go ahead. Um, so as you can see, there are two sets of homework due every week, um, Monday nights and Wednesday nights at 11.59 p.m. and I recommend that you start way earlier than, than that day when it's due. Um, there's seven weeks and we also listed out all the learning objectives in this course outline so at the end of the day, at the end of the week, you sit down and you can check off all these learning objectives. If you feel like you have accomplished all of these then you should be ready for the final exam. It's yeah, really well that's the goal. Time. So if you do all the work throughout the, the and and then do it on time, and you feel competent with everything that you did, then the final exam should be a breeze. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can see here that uh, the homework names and numbers are listed as they appear on the book. So if you want to, if you prefer to refer to the book instead of um, online to prepare for your homework, you can do so. But your homework is still still needs to be done online on Connect. Okay. So you want to show them about Connect now? All right. Uh, so let's go to Connect. There are a couple of ways to do so, and like I said, don't try to go to Connect and find the course. Go to the course and find Connect. So um, you can see the link right here. You click on it. You will see that um, this is the class that you are in. You see the instructor, you see the name. And if you haven't yet registered, then click here, register now. It will take you through all the steps and at the end, the ask for your credit card, naturally. This is where um, you pay the $65. Mm -hmm. You can go with Connect Plus, like Jeff mentioned earlier, which includes the book for $125, or you could just go with Connect for $65. Yeah, the Connect Plus, there's, in addition to uh, the, the money issue that I talked about earlier, I personally find having the book very useful when you're working on problems. So be able, unless you have two screens, 
to work with. Some people have two screens. They've got an iPad and a, and a computer or something like that. Then you can have the book on one of, one of the screens and the problem on another. But it's very useful to be able to, to have, some, have the, the book information in a separate place than the screen. So if you're already registered, then you're ready to sign in? You probably won't see the screen, but you will see this one. Now here we are in Connect, and I'll switch to the student view. This is what you will see. You will see um, a list of homework listed at by weeks. And let's go into one of them. Let's go into week two. And you will see all the homework assignments that we mentioned earlier, the Learn Smart quiz. It will tell you when it's due, right on the second column. The homework, the chapter homework, when it's due. And the interactive video, not graded, but recommended. And the optional homework rework, which is going to be available immediately or two minutes after your homework is due. And a set of optional practice homework, lots of questions that you can just play around with. And the solutions are given? Yep, yep, after okay. your first attempt. Um, so the one that's the two points of extra credit, can you show mm -hmm. that? If you go to the very first week, then you'll see interactive video, which is always not graded. But the Learn Smart quiz that you see here is extra two points. So if it's a way to introduce you to Learn Smart. And of course, ask me questions if you think that it's tricky or browser doesn't work. Um, but make yeah, sure you ask this questions. This is the time to make sure that you, your computer is working right mm -hmm. and working, interacting with Connect correctly. Mm -hmm. So Learn Smart is this LS indicator over over here. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of views to the assignment list. You can go to Calendar. I think it's a good view. So in the calendar view, um, everything will be listed out for you on a calendar. So you'll see here that Mondays and Wednesdays are homework heavy. You see when the um, progress check is due. It's on the 14th and it's a Monday. Um, and you know whatever homework is due on a certain day. And make sure you ask me questions. Um, there are ways for you to ask questions um, on Connect. If you go to the bottom of the page, you will see um, that there's a check my work link and a ask my instructor, uh, ask my instructor link. All right, let's attempt this. You can check my work. Checking your work will allow you to see if the number that you put in was correct or not. And um, ask your instructor a question will send um, me an email or a message on Connect letting me know that you are running into difficulties with a certain part of the question. Or you can email me. If you choose to email me, make sure that you take a picture, take a snapshot of your screen so I know what sets of numbers you are working with. Yeah, and, and of course copying that into your email if you, yep. if you can do that. Yep. Um, so yeah. I think that covers everything. Okay. I think you're ready to go. Uh, the important points that I would like to highlight are number one, you got to keep up. This this is a very fast course. Uh, I know that the summer, especially in Maine, is beautiful, and so there's a tendency to, to blow off an online class. Do not do that. It will hurt you, and and you'll be very frustrated by uh, number one having sort of wasted some money. And not given, got you've kind of hurt your grade point average and those kinds of things. So don't don't do that. Um, so just keep up and do, if you do all the work in this course, you should do well in the exam and should do do well in the course. That's the beauty. It's not rocket science. It's not something you you know. It's not like physics or something really complicated. You just do the work, and you and if you do all of the work and put the hours and effort into it. You should do well in this course. Anything else you want to say? I think we're all set. I think you'll find working with Ling 
great. The students tell me that she is, is very helpful. And uh, the other thing I would say is if you're having any trouble, contact her. She, um, she and I are in different generation. She, she gets that email and she'll turn around and get right back on it. She, she, she's very good at responding. And um, so I think you're fortunate to be working with, with her. She's, Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good luck. Good luck. I look forward to hearing from you.